Hi, Mo and Dave. How are you? I'm doing well, Rebecca. Thank you. Great. I'm so happy to be able to talk with you today from Silicon Valley. And uh, Mo and Jeet uh, Kelly has been a longtime friend of Silicon Dragon and Silicon Global and Silicon Heartland um, and uh, based in Silicon Valley, but with a lot of experience from around the world. And I just learned that your background is really um, in aerospace. Um, <laughs> So certainly uh, space tech has been a, a big theme uh, recently. And uh, so tell us, uh, what are you hearing about what's new in space tech? Are we ever going to be able to clean up um, clean up the, uh, the sky with all that debris floating around? Well, there, there are lots of uh, things we could we could talk about in in, in that statement question. But um, so first of all, thank you for for taking the time. Thank you for having me um, sure. on on the show here. Uh, look, I mean, Iron Pillar, you know, the, the fund is really all about uh, investing in, in technology companies that are building products, in our case, from India for right. global markets, for, for the world. And, and, and so it's, it's really across the board. The focus primarily is uh, enterprise software. But to your space question, uh, you know, that's something that's near and dear to my heart. I mean, I, I studied um, Aero Astro and, and, and space propulsion back in, you know, as an undergrad and grad, grad student. And, um, and, and so it's been, you know, part and parcel of my life intellectually for, for the last several decades, but goodness, uh, over the last few years, uh, it's really taken, you know, uh, sort of a centerpiece, uh, not necessarily from, you know, that being an area of focus from an investment standpoint per se, but, uh, intellectually and and also from just paying it forward standpoint, I'm a fundamental believer in you know giving unconditionally. And so uh, a bunch of these entrepreneurs, especially Indian space tech entrepreneurs, have figured out that you know there's there's the universe of one in terms of somebody who knows propulsion, knows India, knows venture. And so they've all sort of figured out how to get to me, and I've been making some connections uh, around the world for them. Hoping that you know those lead to uh, really interesting uh, you know ventures or, or or progression going forward. And now the other thing you mentioned uh, briefly is uh, you know space debris, for example. Uh, so a, a very dear friend of mine named Alex Fielding, along with Steve Wozniak, uh, the co-founder of Apple, have started a company called Privateer that's based in Maui, Hawaii. And the idea is to first um, uh, basically observe. Uh, down to fairly small uh, size objects, what's there in space, and then uh, come up with both policy and process uh, around cleanup. So I think that's something that as space becomes more robust, as there are more ventures, as there are more micro nano uh, satellites and other aspects, um, you know, providing utility for us terrestrial uh, folks, I think somebody will have to take care of um, sort of the overall governance framework, if you will. And uh, while the governments may have some friction and so on, I think it will be startups that help us, uh, you know, manage that ecosystem going forward. Yeah, I can certainly see that we need some innovation around this uh, space tech area. <laughs> Recent um, incidents have proven that. Uh, absolutely. So, I'm, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious, why does India, why is India into space tech? Or what, what's in its heritage that uh, it's into space tech and, you know, kind of a leader in that? It's kind of surprising to me. Yeah, I mean, I think for, for a lot of people, it, it, it is surprising, but to be honest, it should not be. And, and, and the reason simply is that if you think about, you know, geographies that have had uh, a space program as a sort of inherent part of their being, India is one of very few nations on the planet uh, where that is applicable, right? So the entire sort of ISRO program, the NASA equivalent, the Indian Space Research Organization, has been around for many decades, and it's one of the most successful, you know, space programs in the world. Uh, you know, whether it's lunar missions, Martian missions, um, you know, overall sort of satellite launches and so on, it, it is one of the safest and most successful programs in the world. And by the way, uh, one thing I tell my Silicon Valley brethren who are in that uh, business is I think India has two orders of magnitude advantage over their Western counterparts in many cases. I wouldn't say in all cases, but in many cases. And, and the first order of magnitude is cost. So you can build things, design and build things much more capital efficiently um, there than you could here uh, would be my argument. And the second is time. 
and and you can do it faster uh, there than you can uh, here. And the reason I say that the latter part is, you know, if you zoom out, um, you've got a, a remarkable sort of ecosystem that has developed, especially over the last, let's say, decade around space, tech, uh, entrepreneurial sort of ecosystem, which is you've got these young 20 and 30 somethings that are relatively recent graduates from the IITs and equivalent in India, working side by side with retired ISRO geniuses, right? Folks who have designed, launched, and managed, uh, you know, many, many, uh, uh, you know, space programs uh, going back 30, 40 plus years. And so you've got sort of the 70-somethings the and the 20-somethings working side by side. One provides sort of the aspiration, the young, you know, I'm going to make something happen. And then you've got uh, folks who've actually been there, done that, saying, yes, you can, but here are the steps you need to take. So I think India is just in a very unique position uh, where, where they have this sort of intellectual and human sort of horsepower uh, to, to create more and more uh, successful ventures. And that's why you're seeing everything from, you know, 3D printed rockets to, uh, you know, hyperspectral imaging to, you know, creating sort of an AWS equivalent in space. Uh, all of these companies are coming out of out of India and actually getting getting funding both from domestic sources, as well as uh, you know folks, both individuals, family offices, and venture capital firms from Silicon Valley in the U.S. Um, and Singapore. I mean, you know, GIC, the Sovereign Wealth Fund in Singapore, is very active in terms of investing in Indian space tech uh, ventures, which is which is a pretty interesting you know trend to observe. It is. Are you going to be investing in any of these space tech ventures from well, Ireland? Let's see. I mean, I think I think from the current fund, it's unlikely. Um, but uh, you know, given that there's at least some level of domain expertise uh, in house, um, uh, you know, I I would not. Uh, I well, let's just say it's 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 not imminent. But I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up uh, you know as part of our portfolio at some point. All right. Now, I understand that the India venture capital is booming these days. And isn't that partly in response to all of this China tech friction that we're seeing today and people pulling back from China? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, challenge and opportunity are, are flip side of the same coin. And so what is challenging, perhaps, for one part of the world, uh, China in this particular case, um, is is a massive opportunity for for India, and and I think um, you know the the, the current government, uh, as well as other institutions and of course entrepreneurs are seeing that opportunity and grabbing it. And so uh, capital that otherwise would have gone to China is all of a sudden saying, hmm, what is the one country where you know you've got you've got GDP growth, you've got a young population, so the demographic dividend is there, you've got a, a thriving sort of entrepreneurial ecosystem. I mean, some of the largest companies in the world are being run by, you know, Indians or Indian Americans or Indo-Europeans. Indo and so uh, there's just a, 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 a rising tide around, uh, you know, India and innovation and, uh, and, and, you know, Indian entrepreneurs. And so whether you look at it from, you know, unicorn creation, of course, that happened during uh, the, the uptick in, in 2021, especially uh, early part of 22, or you, you look at, you know, the likes of Freshworks going public, which is a, you know, a watershed moment uh, for an Indian SaaS company to, to list on the NASDAQ. I think those are catalysts for what I call the success begets success virtuous cycle, which is starting to play, um, you know, meaningful role in, in India. So folks who are a little bit on the on the fence, should they do India or not, are now tilting over. Uh, and those who were sort of tourist VCs are now doubling down and saying, yep, we're going to mm -hmm. actually hire somebody full time to to be dedicated uh, to looking at, you know, Indian um, uh, opportunities. So so I think that is uh, those to me are clear indications that you know the roaring, I would say the 20s, 30s, and 40s are India's for the taking. Uh, you know, barring a, a, a natural or or human-made catastrophe. To be honest. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're going to be getting a lot of uh, increased competition from other VCs coming into the market. So, how is Iron Pillar going to distinguish uh, its investment approach? 
No, fantastic question. So, so really a twofold answer to that. One is I think the overall opportunity set is, is going to, you know, grow an order, if not two orders of magnitude, right? So there's going to be just remarkable innovation, remarkable uh, entrepreneurs coming out of, uh, out of India and our cadence, to be honest, I mean, we're, we have a relatively uh, concentrated portfolio strategy. Um, so our fund one, we invested in eight companies of those eight, four have really broken out. And, and, and so, you know, batting 500 in the baseball uh, terminology is not a bad thing uh, when it comes to, you know, venture capital, that's a, that's a pretty high uh, hit rate. And we're now uh, investing out of our, our second fund. And, and, and even there of the six companies that we've invested in, in the last call it, you know, 12 to 18 months, four of those six have done up rounds even in this environment, right, which has which has seen some headwinds. So we feel, uh, you know, we are we are on to something really interesting. But to your question, you know, what makes us different is, you know, for a relatively small fund, we are a relatively large team. So we've got over 20 people on our team. And most of them are very senior, very senior, meaning, you know, 20, 25 years of experience. And the reason we we've done that is very prescriptive. So what we do is we get deeply involved with our concentrated portfolio. And that's the reason we have a concentrated portfolio. So we can go deep and spend time with our companies really across three different um, work streams, right? So one is opening doors around customers, partners, revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, second is really talent. And so we have, um, you know, we have bases, if you will, or points of presence in Bangalore, Mumbai, Dubai, and Palo Alto. And so the sun shall never set on Iron Pillar is what we what we say. And so we can make these really interesting connections. If a company in the U.S. wants to hire people in the Middle East or Europe or a Asia or India, we can make that happen and vice versa, right? So that's the second pool is talent. And third is really strategic capital downstream. So once we come in, we typically invest in a Series B or a Series C of a company and then we really work closely with them to bring value added investors, whether they're strategic or institutional downstream. And so uh, what's also interesting about us is even though, uh, you know, our funds, the first fund was, you know, 90 million, we did a top up fund, which is around 48 million. And, and we haven't publicly announced sort of the, the, the corpus for fund two, but it's, it's larger than, than fund one. So overall, you know, let's say the capital may be uh, several hundred million dollars. Um, uh, you know that that we're that we're managing, but alongside that, what we've invested from the funds, there's been almost two hundred million of LP co-invest. So our our own investors have come alongside us and put capital into our portfolio company. So we appear to be, let's say, you know, two x the size. Uh, of our of our funds, uh, thanks to this sort of LP co invest. So that's a very interesting and unique program that um, that also is, is is part of the differentiation, both from the entrepreneur standpoint in terms of the value that we bring, and from the LP standpoint because we give them access uh, to some some you know remarkable entrepreneurs. Right. So in terms of returns for the from the portfolio, have any of these? Uh companies gone public or been acquired or what kind of exit have you had? So we we're, we're still relatively early in our journey, right? So our first fund was, uh, was, you know, the final close happened in 2018. So we're about four and a half years into our journey and, and a typical, uh, you know, life cycle of, of, a, of a company from let's say their seed or even series A to an exit can be, you know, eight to 10 years, uh, typically. Having said that, um, you know, we are, uh, unlike most funds, which are 10-year life cycle funds, we are a seven-year life cycle fund, meaning that since we get into a company, once a company is in sort of the fourth, fifth, or sixth year of their journey, we feel that in the following, call it five or six years, we should be able to, um, you know, get to a liquidity event, some sort of a, an, an exit scenario. And so, distributions or DPI for us is is very very important it's just not not just the uh, the TVPI that the, the you know the total value per investor dollar but it's really distributed um distribution per investor dollar is uh, is very very important so at this point we've had one exit which was um a company that we sold a company called Now Floats out of fund 1 that we sold to 
uh, Reliance uh, and the Abanis, and 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 so that was a, a a positive outcome. But really, our 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 breakout companies, you know, four of them from Fund One, uh, which is Unifor, which is conversational AI company, Servify, which is an insurance tech company uh, around managing devices and lifecycle management of these devices, Fresh to Home, which is a vertically integrated. Uh, fresh, uh, you know, uh, uh, meat and poultry company that's now gone global, and then Bluestone, which is an omni-channel, again vertically integrated, you know, one of the largest jewelry brands uh, in India and the region. So those four companies have grown uh, anywhere from you know five to twenty x since we uh, since we invested uh, just you know a couple three years ago. So so they're in the right uh, on the right path, and yes. my guess is that exit. Velocity is going to start increasing uh, probably in the next uh, two to three years, and so we're very very excited about the prospects. But you answer to answer your question at this point, just one exit. Um, the others are sort of up and to the right, and and we're looking for the right opportunity, most likely in the next you know two to three years to start okay. delivering um, you know returns to our investors. Okay, so when will you be raising a new fund? Ah, well, um, so. We have actually closed one vehicle um, uh, 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 recently. Um, you know, given that this is a pseudo public uh, forum, I, I I cannot be seen as as soliciting. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on, on answering your question uh, directly. But needless to say, um, you know, we are in. Uh, you know, we we continue to have. Let's just say we continue to have conversations with our existing. Okay. investors and and potential investors who keep uh, you know bringing um leads inbound just asking yeah. you know the very same question well the indie opportunity is huge so uh we think we will see another fund in the works so all right well thank you we'll have to have you back on the show when you get that fund uh, up and going and uh, really thank you a lot Mohanji, for being with us today it's great to catch up on what iron pillar is doing and and uh, yeah, congratulations. So uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank yeah, you. It's, it's nice to have you here on this VC snapshot. I'm calling it a VC snapshot. <laughs> really? Like uh, yeah. Okay. So like thank it. you again. I'm going to pause here. <laughs>